We have breaking news courtesy of a brand new statement that just crossed from Donald Trump. He asserts in this statement that his home in Mar-a-Lago is, quote, under siege, raided, and occupied by a large group of FBI agents, end quote. Uh, this new statement from Donald Trump seems to assert um, that there is an FBI raid, recent or ongoing. He says that, quote, this unannounced raid on my home was not necessary. He also then goes on to attack the DOJ and makes various claims we have previously heard about his view of the investigation. But a big headline here that NBC News and MSNBC has not yet confirmed but the former president saying there is a raid at Mar-a-Lago. We will keep working on confirming and reporting the story. The, the readout with Jason Johnson filling in is up next. Tonight on the readout, we have breaking news. Yeah, that sound? Right. That and we are elated. Every member of my caucus is elated about what happened because we've really, we've changed the world. <laughs> Democrats' winning streak continues with a major victory in the Senate on health care, taxes, and climate, while Republicans continue their streak of voting against things that voters overwhelmingly support, like putting a cap on insulin prices. Also tonight, the madness of the Republican Party, it's not just CPAC. There's also the new reporting about Trump asking his top military leaders why they couldn't be more like German generals. You know, from Nazi times. Plus, stunning allegations of voting machine tampering against the Republican running to be Michigan's attorney general. But we begin with breaking news. You hear that sound? It is the sound of the police. There appears to be an investigation by the feds into Mar-a-Lago, the home of Donald Trump, the twice impeached president and very much disgraced president. We're going to go to this news right now with Representative Mo Khanna. Uh, Ro, are you here and have you heard this news that the former president... His residence is now being investigated by the feds. I have. It's obviously a very serious matter. I know President Trump issued a very lengthy defensive statement. But look, the FBI doesn't just go in unless a judge signs off on a search warrant. That means they have some probable evidence uh, about possible wrongdoing. Uh, and it's something that uh, the whole country needs to pay attention to and shows that Justice Garl, uh, Attorney General Garland is setting this up step by step. So this is the first question that, that occurs to me, and I think a lot of people watching right now, is how major is this as far as other members of sort of the Trump cabal. It's been one thing to talk about the former president. It's been one thing to, to, to bring in the Coens and people associated with him. But for the FBI to actually be knocking down doors in his home, is this a time that Americans can believe that perhaps the orange jumpsuit is, for, is forthcoming? Because this doesn't seem to be common. What would be your take on that? Well, I don't want to politicize it because I think Attorney General Garland and the Justice Department have done a very good job by following the facts. And it's not for me or members of Congress to say what should happen. It should be where the facts lead them. And they have been very methodical. They have not been quick uh, to do anything, but it shows that they are uh, concerned that serious crimes were committed and they're following the evidence. And now let's see uh, what they end up doing. But I, I do think that uh, this gives me confidence that the Justice Department is really pursuing this thoroughly, objectively, uh, and in a non-political way. Speaking of being non-political, I, I have to admit, uh, you know, in many respects, my, my first thought when I heard this news is I wanted to congratulate the bipartisan January 6th committee. Do you believe that the efforts made by your colleagues on the January 6th committee, including Republicans and Democrats, and the enthusiasm and the hunger and the satisfaction that Americans have gotten from watching those hearings, do you think that had an influence on the aggressiveness with which we're seeing right now from the Department of Justice against the former president? I think that had an impact on the country in understanding what happened, that it wasn't just about the riots and insurrection on the Capitol, that there was a plan to basically try to overturn the election, to have someone installed as president who didn't win either the popular vote or the Electoral College. And they did a masterful job of explaining that to the American public. Uh, I believe that the Justice Department has been following the law and the facts from day one, uh, and they have been doing it in the way that builds trust. And I don't think it's helpful 
for members of Congress to politicize it because ultimately uh, what we want is an independent Justice Department that is not acting in a political motive. That's why President Biden appointed Attorney General Garland. Many people are saying, oh, he's too slow or he's not doing anything. I think what he has shown is integrity. And that's why whatever he does, the Justice Department is going to have the confidence of the American public. So, Representative Connor, I always push back slightly on this because it, it, it is a political investigation, and that's not inherently bad. And I say this because it was an attempt at a political insurrection, right? Like, you, you can't say it's non political when the former president was trying to use politics to sort of overrule uh, the, the, the sort of will of the people. But my question for you also is now that you've seen this, do you think this will have an impact? on impending votes in Congress. Do you think that this will make your Republican colleagues more likely to go along with what seem to be policy initiatives by the Biden administration the American public wants? Do you think this will make them more likely to separate themselves from President Trump? Or do you think that they'll basically double down and say, well, the FBI is after him, so now it's our opportunity. We have to sort of circle the wagons as we have before. What do you think the impact of, of this FBI raid will have on your body working forward? Well, you know, for almost six years, every time I thought that uh, the Republicans would finally speak up against Donald Trump, uh, they have unfortunately let me down. So I don't know uh, whether this will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. But if anything, it should hopefully get enough Republicans in the Senate and a few in the House to vote for the Electoral Count Act, Reform Act, which will make sure that whoever wins the popular vote in states in 2024 actually gets the uh, slate's delegates, because otherwise you're going to have a situation uh, where someone can try to steal the election again. And hopefully, at the very least, the January 6th commission and all of these uh, findings by the Justice Department will lead to bipartisan support for upholding the basic principles of our democracy. That, I'm optimistic, can pass the Senate and the House. I want to follow up on this. I, I, one of the things that has occurred to me is that as we go through the January 6th hearings, as we see the investigations by the Department of Justice, the number one thing that Congress and this administration can do and should do is secure the vote. How confident are you in this Electoral Vote Count Act? Do you think that these kinds of raids could lead to renewed interest in passing this bill, not just in the House, but in the Senate? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who gets indicted, it doesn't matter who gets arrested, it doesn't matter who ends up in Oz if the vote still can't be protected in November. Absolutely, I do. And I think uh, people are looking at this and uh, regretting probably the impeachment vote in the Senate. And I think after that, some people thought Donald Trump would just go away. He obviously hasn't. Uh, now you have a Justice Department ongoing investigation into conduct, at the very least, of people very close to him. And we don't know uh, whether it will implicate the president or not, but they are certainly uh, looking at evidence that the president has, a uh, former president has. And so my view is this is the time where we need to at least have the Electoral Count Act passed. And I am encouraged that there are Republicans in the Senate who support that. All that the act says is that there needs to be judicial review before someone, a state legislature, can overturn the popular vote in that state. And I fear if we don't do that, that you could have a repeat uh, of the efforts in 2020 and 2024. And that would be malpractice for our Congress not to prevent someone from stealing the election in 2024. Thank you, Congressman Ro Khanna, for starting us off with this breaking news today. Thank you so much. Joining me now is Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney, MSNBC legal analyst, and professor at the University, School, uh, University of Michigan School of Law. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Barbara. First, what is your immediate reaction to this unannounced FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago, the home of the twice-impeached former president and insurrectionist leader Donald Trump? Absolutely stunning. I'm absolutely stunned. I'm stunned that it's happening so quickly, and I'm stunned that it's happening at all. Searching the premises of the president's residence is uh, absolutely unprecedented. Uh, but keep in mind, this could only happen if a judge found probable cause to believe that evidence of a crime will be found there. So really stunning development. So, Barbara, take us through that process. Look, my, my knowledge of the law pretty much begins and ends with law and order, occasionally some CSI. So is it, is it a matter of the Department of Justice, they just find a local judge? Do they have to find a federal judge? Do they also have to get approval from local police? Is it the FBI comes in and commandeers everything? What is the process that the federal investigators had to go through in order 
to initiate this unannounced raid? Well, first, to get a warrant, usually you have to have developed probable cause, which usually requires months and months of investigation. That builds a record. Then a federal agent swears out an affidavit in great detail. It may be 10, 20 pages long, detailing all of the evidence thus far in the investigation that they believe supports probable cause to search the premises. That is, that there will be evidence of a specific crime found there. Not just any old crime, but crimes they've been investigating for which they believe they have probable cause. They then have to take that to a judge in the district where the property is located. So that would be the Southern District of Florida. In a case of this magnitude, the approvals will go all the way to the attorney general himself. Uh, this would not happen without his absolute approval. Once that warrant is secured, then the FBI would assemble a team, and they usually do bring with them some local police officers who know the lay of the land, who can go up and help with a knock and announce, explain why they're there, and then the teams begin their search, and they can search any place on the premises where the items they're looking for might be found. In this case, my guess is it's documents and maybe electronic storage devices like cell phones, iPads, and the like. And so that really allows them to look just about anywhere where you might be able to find a document. And people often are shocked at the number of agents that show up for a search like this. Um, but they usually go into rooms in pairs so that they can develop a chain of custody if that evidence ever gets to be used in a trial. In a premises the size of Mar-a-Lago, I am guessing it's dozens and dozens of agents going in, unless there's one very specific specific things they want to seize, like a box of classified documents that didn't get turned over, uh, and they're, they're looking for specific items. My guess is it's dozens and dozens of agents participating in this search. Now, this is one thing that occurs to me. We've seen evidence, uh, people have talked about it in the books, people have talked about it in the previous administration, that Donald Trump would tear things up, uh, flush documents down the toilet, you know, have them cut up. What do you think, given that he had a tendency to try to burn bag things while they were happening, what do you think, if you had to speculate, what do you think they're going to actually find at Mar-a-Lago? Does any, I mean, would, would Trump and, and his cronies be dumb enough to take FedEx boxes worth of indictable materials and drag them to his house? Well, as we used to say in uh, my former office, we don't catch the smart ones. Um, people do all kinds of things because they are either too foolish to understand the consequences or too arrogant to believe anybody will ever look for them. Uh, I don't know. And uh, it, it is also the case, though, that a judge can't issue a warrant just to go look through the house on the theory that maybe there's something there that could be evidence of a crime. There has to be probable cause that there's a, a reasonably specific items will be found there. And so perhaps documents were sent there by aides or others uh, it could be that there is uh, things that have been found on people's phones or other electronic devices trace their way back to Mar-a-Lago. And it may not be Donald Trump himself. It may be a family member. It may be a staffer or somebody who has an office at Mar-a-Lago. So it could be anywhere there. But we know this. It is somebody who is close to former President Trump. And we know that a judge has found probable cause that a specific crime uh, it, it, it has been either been committed or is being committed and that evidence of that crime exists on the premises at Mar-a-Lago. In the event, let's say we find out or let's say the FBI finds out that there are classified documents in the possession of the former president in his home. Who could potentially be at risk for being arrested? I, I assume at that point they'd have to figure out, well, okay, who brought this box here? But at the end of the day, is that alone something that could lead to an arrest? If they say, look, somebody's got to tell us how this box got into this building, could that lead to an arrest of the president, uh, of the former first lady, assuming that she's actually there, or, or somebody else who may have brought that information down there? Well, finding classified documents would alarm government officials for two reasons. One is the potential crimes that you suggested, possessing uh, cl classified materials outside of their uh, proper receptacle. The other is who else may have had access to it. So it's sometimes referred to as a spill, even if it's just an unintentional uh, possession of a classified document outside of where it's supposed to be stored, because it, it, you don't know who may have seen it. And documents are classified because they protect uh, methods, means, sources that are the nation's secrets. And so if those secrets are out and they get into the hands of foreign adversaries, that could be very dangerous to certain people who are serving as sources. So that's one area of great concern. The other is potential criminal liability. And so if someone 
inadvertently brought boxes of documents thinking it was, uh, you know, framed pictures with uh, Vladimir Putin or something, uh, that is unlikely to result in criminal charges. There are some charges for uh, negligent handling of classified information, but as we saw right. in the case of Hillary Clinton, we've never seen somebody charged unless there's a willful violation. And so, you know, taking this material either to harm the United States or to help a foreign adversary. And so you'd have to show that level of willful intent before somebody could be charged criminally. Do we know, and this is a, a general sort of informational question, we know Mar-a-Lago is the, is the home of the former president. Do we know who else actually lives there? Do we know what kind of people are there in and out on a regular basis? I, I alluded to the fact that we don't know if the former first lady is actually there, but do we know if, if he has staffers, former staffers that live with him? Do we know, is it just sort of a big, you know, empty Wayne Manor where it's just him sitting across from a big table by himself every night? How do we actually know who's there and, and who could possibly be implicated if something is found in that home? Yeah, you know, again, without knowing what this search is for, it's hard to know. But one of the things that the agents would need to do is to conduct investigation to figure that out. Who has access to that property? Who is coming and going? Because they can only search the, the property of uh, that is authorized in that search warrant. So if it's a place, a resort where guests come and go, or you have people right. working or other people living, you have to make sure that you're only searching the premises that are covered by that warrant. So that would be some legwork that the agents would have done in anticipation of this warrant. Going forward, we now have this raid at the home of the former president. I have one last question, Robert. Got to ask you the last question. Do you think that this is the last such raid like this will, that will occur? Do you think we're going to see a slew of raids like this as the sort of dominoes fall and other people in the former administration are concerned? Well, uh, searching the president's premises strikes me as something that happens toward the end of an investigation. You know, there's been a lot of criticism uh, of Merrick Garland for not moving quickly enough in his investigations into the former president. But typically what you want to do is get your ducks in a row before you uh, aim at the, the leader of a criminal organization. So uh, the, similarly, a search warrant is an overt investigative step that you do only after you have completed most of your covert investigative steps. So this strikes me as something that's uh, at the end of the line. We may be seeing criminal charges after they review this material in the shorter term than I might have expected. I've been predicting criminal charges, if any, to be filed well after midterm elections, uh, but maybe they're going to prove me wrong. Thank you, Barbara McQuaid. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. Stay with us. Much more on this major breaking story. Former President Trump says his home at Mar-a-Lago in Florida has been raided by the FBI. The F readout continues after this. Breaking news. We have an unannounced raid of Mar-a-Lago, the former of the current home of the former president of the United States, Donald Trump. This is not only unprecedented, but it is also a sign that perhaps the advancement in the DOJ's plans have gone much further than people anticipated and expected. One of the primary concerns that we've one of the primary concerns that we've heard from members of Congress and analysts and former people who have actually worked in the White House and those victims from the insurrection in January 6th is perhaps things were not moving as quickly as expected. This is a sign that perhaps the Department of Justice and Merrick Garland have gotten much more serious about this investigation than we initially expected. We will now be moving to, uh, I believe, Kurt Bardella and Dana Milbank, I'm sorry, Dave Ehrenberg, who will be coming... The Palm Beach County State Attorney, who will be telling us exactly what occurred at Mar-a-Lago today. Well, thank you for having me. Um, my office was not involved with the search today. This was all the feds. We were not notified of it. So this was kept close to the vest by the feds. And one thing to know is, is that Mar-a-Lago is closed during the summer. It's, it's a ghost town over there. Uh, Trump is in Bedminster. And there are no functions at the club. It's a social club, but there are guest suites there. And so although Trump was not there, I do think that he will believe that this is crossing a red line. This is his inner sanctum. And to get this, uh, this raid of his place, it has to be a warrant signed off by a judge. There needs to be probable cause. There needs to be a belief that there's evidence there that could lead to a crime. It can't be a fishing expedition. So this is definitely serious stuff. And I guess the next question is, what crime are they pursuing? 
and who are they pursuing against? I do not believe uh, they're searching Mar-a-Lago to build a case against someone else who lives there or a guest of the place. Uh, that's Donald Trump's home. And I think it shows for further evidence that DOJ is indeed looking at Donald Trump himself. And as far as the crimes, well, you have the false elector scheme, which uh, is, according to reports, being tied to Donald Trump. You also have reports of mishandling of classified materials. But as Barbara said in the previous segment, that's rarely charged. I mean, generally, you got to show willful misconduct. And when you are the president, you can immediately declassify documents. So I don't think that's what this is about. Um, and the other thing to know is lately, the DOJ has subpoenaed people really close to Trump, like Pat Cipollone, his former White House counsel. So I think this is definitely big news. Uh, I wish I could have more information about it. But as I said, my office is not involved. Uh, Dave, I, I'm curious about this, and I hope you take this in the, the, the sincere way in which it's being asked. Do you think there's a possibility that the FBI was concerned uh, about alerting local law enforcement because they thought that Trump might have gotten a heads up? I mean, I'm sure DeSantis is thrilled about this, but there might be people on the ground that they were concerned would have told the former president, hey, maybe you need to clean out the building. It's very common for the feds to keep things close to the vest. Uh, they mm -hmm. will work with us on some matters, but it is not uncommon for them to go do it alone without telling us. And, and even though we will not divulge secrets, uh, this is very normal for this to happen. I do want to throw some cold water on this, though. For people to think that this means an indictment of Trump is imminent, here's why I don't think that's the case. First of all, you've seen the raids on Rudy Giuliani's home, John Eastman's home, and there wasn't an immediate indictment. They're still building evidence. The other thing that tells me that an indictment is not imminent is that the DOJ is starting to litigate issues of executive privilege. They're going to court to proactively prevent Trump world from invoking executive privilege. That's the kind of thing that you do at the beginning of an investigation, not at the end. So I think this is an evidentiary move here, uh, but don't expect charges to follow immediately. Thank you, Palm Beach County State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg. Thank you so much. Joining me right now is Kurt Bardella, advisor to the DNC and the DCC, and Dana Milbank, uh, Dana Milbank, columnist for The Washington Post and author of The Destructionist, the 25-year crack-up of the Republican Party, which comes out tomorrow. Kurt, I'll start with you. Just your immediate reaction to this unannounced raid on Mar-a-Lago. Are you surprised? Are you thrilled? Are you jumping up and down? What was your immediate reaction? Uh, I guess we know why so many Republicans were talking about defunding the FBI at CPAC over the last weekend. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that this is this is unprecedented. I mean, we and we cannot underscore and understate the fact that the former president of the United States' residence, if you will, just got raided by the FBI. Um, I think that as we look ahead at the political consequences, potentially, I think any Republican who has spent their time and energy on the campaign trail sucking up to Donald Trump, begging for his support, begging for his endorsement, they do so at their peril because whatever happens next, I don't think it's going to be particularly good. And I don't know how you get to campaign on being the law and order party. Well, perhaps the single person that has the biggest sway in your party is under this type of scrutiny from the FBI. Unlike Vegas... What, stay, what happens in Mar-a-Lago may not stay in Mar-a-Lago after this investigation. Uh, Dana, as Kurt sort of suggested, people who are politically connected to Trump, all the Republican mm -hmm. members of Congress who go down to Mar-a-Lago to kiss the ring, do you think right now they may be concerned? Are they thinking, did I leave my business card in the wrong bathroom? Did I leave this document here or there? I mean, are there members of Congress right now who are checking their schedules to see how much time they spent there and whether they left anything mm -hmm. incriminating? Well, it may well be, and it's it's a testament to Donald Trump's uh, malfeasance that there are any number of things that this could be about. There are so many potential avenues of criminality and so many different uh, people involved. So uh, there's a whole lot of reason for a lot of people to be concerned. But there's a reason we should all be concerned right at this moment, because you can see in uh, Donald Trump's response to this that he is ready uh, to turn up the heat, to turn people against the FBI, against the Justice Department, against the government. So. 
uh, even though it would be a normal procedure for the Justice Department uh, to, proceed, to proceed in some secrecy, I think there's a real public interest in them letting, uh, letting the public know uh, what's going on, getting some information out there, because we're in a potentially dangerous uh, period of time if, if Donald Trump, and possibly with support of Republicans, is going to use this uh, to turn his people against the investigators, against the FBI, against the government. We know what happens uh, when this anti-government rhetoric gets out of hand, and it can often be violent. Dana, one of the, the sort of key theories in your book, The Destructionist, is talking about the fact that, you know, you trace this back to Newt Gingrich. You trace this back to the contract with America. That is where the beginning of the Republican Party sort of going off the rails begins. With that in mind, it's been almost 30 years since we saw that sort of transformation. What do you think is a potential worst case scenario here? You know, in, in August of, of 2018, two years into the Trump administration, he was tweeting about how he wanted Jeff Sessions to stop the witch hunt. He has now shown himself capable of literally raising a terrorist army to attack the Capitol. Do you think that this raid on his home will lead to domestic violence, domestic terror, or any other sort of violent reaction as he claims that he's been violated in his home? Well, Jason, God willing, it won't, but that is exactly uh, the concern right now. And if you look at, uh, to go back to the 90s, as, as you just were, uh, before the Oklahoma City bombing, there was a whole lot of things building up to that, a lot of smaller uh, skirmishes and incidents, and a whole lot of heated rhetoric coming from uh, Republican uh, lawmakers, from conservative talk radio at the time. Uh, and it got heated and more heated, uh, and then we had that uh, catastrophic event. Uh, I, I think some people who follow these things closely are worried that we've been building towards uh, just such a moment right now uh, with the rising amount uh, of violence we've seen from uh, right-wing domestic terrorists who are uh, the lion's share of uh, domestic terrorism right now. Uh, so that is a very real concern, uh, and, but I think a lot of it will uh, hinge on uh, the reaction uh, Trump has. Is he going to sick his, uh, his army of uh, Proud Boys and Oath Keepers on the United States government again? And what happens with uh, his potential rivals and elected Republicans in Congress. Do they join in this uh, anti-government fervor? Well, speaking of people to help us out, standing back and standing by is former FBI official Frank Flagluzzi. Frank, thank you so much for joining us this evening on The Readout. You were the person that I wanted to talk to about this. What is the significance? I mean, it, 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 you were in the FBI. I am sure there are agents who woke up this morning and were thinking, I am going to be raiding the former president's house. That's got to be difficult, regardless of how you feel about the former president of the United States. What do you think the attitudes are going on in the FBI right now? Are people, uh, are they concerned that they think, oh my gosh, this is the beginning of what could be an absolutely serious investigation? Uh, were people aware of this all along and were like, hey, this is just step one and finally bringing this person down? What do you think is sort of the internal rhetoric going on at the FBI right now about this unannounced raid? So, Jason, yeah, not only did I spend 25 years in the FBI, but I, I spent a significant portion of it in the Miami field office, which is responsible, of course, for West Palm Beach and the Mar-a-Lago uh, location. So, um, look, not a lot of time right now for internal introspection going on in the Miami field office and or any other uh, agents from other field offices that came in, but rather let's do this job right. They clearly understand the public scrutiny that will be involved, the gravity of the situation, and of course what's coming next, which will be endless rhetoric from uh, Donald Trump about how horrible the FBI is and how this is a targeted uh, fishing expedition. What we don't know, of course, is really what the substance of this is. We, we don't right. know if this is connected to January 6th or whether this is connected to the National Archives investigation of the uh, top secret and secret documents that Trump allegedly squirreled away at Mar-a-Lago. But it's, it may be helpful, if, if you want, if you haven't done this already, to just walk through the process of a federal agent obtaining a search warrant, um, if you want to just go through that and what it means and what it doesn't mean. So it simply means that the uh, agents decided, and of course at this level, when you're talking about a former president, this will be cleared at the highest level, not only of the FBI, but the U.S. Department of Justice, likely cross the desk of the Attorney General of the United States. And you have to go to a United States magistrate with a prosecutor, an assistant U.S. Okay. attorney, and you have to say, we have evidence, probable cause, that a federal crime has been violated. And number two, 
that evidence of that crime is located in the location we wish to search. That's the big one, right? And so a, a magistrate or judge has to look at that and go, and, and by the way, you know, a magistrate or a judge, you ask about what's going on in the heads of FBI agents, Imagine right. the federal judge or magistrate that may have been gotten out of bed this morning. I've done that before, mm -hmm. right? And and he's reading through a lengthy affidavit, and he's got to like have his coffee or her coffee and go through it and go, "Holy cow, that's Mar-a-Lago, right?" And I'm right. going to sign off on this. And so he has to he has to ask the question: How do you know there's evidence of this crime inside that building? And and that's where very interesting discussions occur. Like, hey, we have we have a source that says it's in a safe. Right what we're looking for, or we have a source that says it's under the bed, right? And then the parameters of the search warrant really kind of constrain where you can look. So, I mean, if you're looking for a car, you're not gonna be looking in the bread basket. And so you've right. got, you can't just tear the place apart unless you're looking for very small devices and things. So, you know, we, we don't know what's happening here, but we know it's of grave significance. We know it's federal, not state or county. Um, and we know that Trump will, of course, lash out starting about right now. And, and Frank, I want to ask you one other question real quick. You're going to be staying with us is how long does this take? Uh, I mean, it, frankly, you know, when we see raids, we tend to see them on the news or if we see them on a television show, the raid goes in. We see people go in the building and then, you know, you go to commercial break. Are they going to be camped out there for a while? Are they ordering pizza because they've got to go? I mean, Mar-a-Lago is a huge location. How long will this raid likely last or do you think it's, you know, a precision situation where they go in, they know it's right behind this one hidden camera and they'll just move a photograph and, and pull something out of a safe? How long do you think this raid will last? So great question, because that will be a clue as to really what they're looking for. So if it's in and out, like, hey, we have somebody telling us the documents we're looking for are in a safe. We get the safe open, we're out. That's all we're going to be allowed to do. If this drags on for hours, which, by the way, some white collar searches, corporate type searches, healthcare fraud, where you're searching an entire hospital administration system for evidence of systemic fraud, that, those, that's going to go on for days. So I, I understand there's some reporting that Trump has issued some kind of a statement. I don't know if he included in his statement whether the agents came and went. We should. We should key in on that. How long were they there? How specific was this? How short was it or how long is it? So, again, it depends, Jason. I'm joined now by NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard. Vaughn, thank you so much for joining us this evening. This is quite the day, quite unexpected. What is the, the mood and, and attitude down there now? Are, are people shocked? Look, I, I remember when the former president was, was in the hospital and there were crowds of people, you know, wearing MAGA clothing and, and, and flag underwear and everything else like that, running around praying for him. Is that the scene that we see surrounding Mar-a-Lago at this point, or are people still in shock? I, I think it's a good question what's happening in Mar-a-Lago right now. We're actually uh, just outside of Milwaukee right now because there's a major primary happening here. Ah. Trump was here over the weekend in the greater Milwaukee area here backing Tim Michaels, who is one of these election-denying candidates who is running for governor and could have his hands on the certification process in 2024. And I think that that's where all of this hits here. I'm, I'm reaching out uh, to multiple Trump sources here right now. I am told by a source familiar that the former president is currently in New York City, the exact location I do not have at this time here. He and his family have not been in Mar-a-Lago over the course of this summer. They have been staying in Bedminster. He did fly back to New Jersey this weekend after attending CPAC in Dallas. But then I know uh, at some point here since then, he made his way to New York City, where he is at right now. Uh, I mean, essentially, the former president was breaking this news himself here. And I think to your question, it's providing the context of this moment here. Donald Trump for years has been setting up an American uh, voting population to question the legitimacy of its investigation agencies. Uh, and he has uh, successfully gotten elected leaders uh, to echo those reservations uh, and the suggestions that the deep state was out to get him. You know, just take Wyoming. Next Tuesday is Liz Cheney's primary against Trump backed Harriet Hageman. And I was in Wyoming in May when the former president was there, and Harriet Hageman stood on stage next to him and said, Do not trust the FBI the CIA, the NSA. So when you are looking at where millions of Americans have been getting their news uh, and the sources in which they trust, 
at the top of it for so many is the former president. There is a distrust in this. And so what you just saw the former president lay out in this lengthy statement, he called it an unannounced raid. Of course, it was approved by a judge here. Uh, and ultimately, there was probable cause for the judge to grant this search warrant of the former president's residency here. And yet at the same time, you have seen the former president call this a witch hunt. He has sown distrust in the media. He has sown distrust in the government. He has sown distrust in our elections here. And the question that we have over these next three months is, where is the American electorate stand? Will they follow the lead of this former president? Will you see Republican leaders up on Capitol Hill step away from the former president and say, maybe we should take a, a moment to see what the Department of Justice has come up with? Again, we don't know if the former president himself is the subject of this investigation. We do not know what they were looking for here. That is important context to all of this. At the same time, uh, Donald Trump has made himself a political martyr and has suggested that he is going to run for president again as such here in order to save America and his words from the radical left. This is a political moment as much as it is, is an investigatory one uh, in the eyes of Donald Trump. Thanks, Vaughn Hilliard, Dana Milbank, and Kurt Bardella. Joining me now is Charlie Sykes, editor at large of The Bulwark, and an MSNBC uh, contributor and NBC national political reporter, Mark Caputo. Uh, Charlie, I'll begin with you. Um, yeah. This is significant, right? <laughs> the the former president of the United States, the FBI has raided his home. Uh, we don't know how long they're going to be there. Trump himself appears to have broken the news by making the announcement one way or another. How is this resonating, or how do you think this is going to resonate over the next 24 hours within the Republican Party? We know that MAGA world's immediate response is going to be, this is terrible, this is the deep state, et cetera, et cetera. But many other Republicans, this is... This is now a different line. The FBI is now in his home. This is a home that they've been to. They may be nervous one way or another. Ron DeSantis may be licking his lips and saying, this is exactly what I wanted. How is this affecting the sort of non-cult members of the Republican Party? Well, it's too fresh, but but I would underline everything that Vaughn Hilliard j just said. I mean, do not underestimate, you know, uh, how much effort Donald Trump has has uh, gone to, to sow distrust in the FBI to set up this particular moment. So this right. will unleash an absolute firestorm. My guess is that many elected Republicans will observe a strategic silence. They will keep their heads down. They won't, uh, they won't speak out about it, I mean, that, because that's, that's their normal pattern. Uh, but you know that MAGA world is going to be absolutely on fire. And the attorney general, Merrick Garland, had to know this. The FBI had to know this. The federal judge or the federal magistrate had to know that they were pulling the trigger on this. I think one of your previous guests described this as crossing the Rubicon. Uh, th right. This is going to have, you, know, you, you can't come back from um, a, an unannounced raid of the president's, uh, former president's home. So uh, clearly, they felt that there was something that they were that was important enough for them to get right now. So everything has escalated dramatically. I think a lot of people have wondered, would there be an indictment? This does not signal that there will be right. an immediate yeah. indictment, but it certainly indicates that the FBI, the Justice Department, and a federal judge um, think that there was a sufficient reason to go into Mar-a-Lago. So I, in, in terms of the Republican reaction, um, I, you know, I, I think... You, you uh, w watch for silence from the usual suspects and uh, absolute in fuego outrage from Trump's inner circle. Mark, let's take a look at the Democratic side of this. So, again, Merrick Garland, the FBI, the DOJ have been adamant to the frustration, really, of quite a few Democrats have been adamant about being apolitical in their investigations. Now, they obviously can't convince cultists that they're apolitical because Donald Trump and his minions have always said that they're out to get them. But how do you think this is being perceived or what's it likely to be perceived by national Democrats? Will they, too, as Charlie suggested, you know, observe sort of silence and say, hey, look, we didn't have anything to do with this. We'll see where the evidence takes us. Do you think that perhaps more progressive Democrats will say, hey, it's about time? How do you think the national messaging for the Democrats is going to be as this news is broken over the next 24 hours? Well, if you look at Twitter, I think the National Democratic reaction is hallelujah. Now, whether that bears out, <laughs> whether that continues on, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I think you're, you're, you're smarter Democrats, especially President Biden, can be incredibly right. measured. Uh, Donald Trump is not right. going to be measured about this. Uh, Charlie's right about uh, the reaction. You know, I have talked to some DeSantis world folks. 
uh, their position uh, is, look, you better have a lot of evidence before you raid a former president's place. So they're just kind of focusing on the process of it. They're not going to step in this one either. Uh, as you pointed out, Merrick Garland is just a very cautious prosecutor. In the end, we have to remember this, is that if they do make a criminal case, you have to have a criminal case where you have enough evidence where you can think you can convict the person. So that's a right. high bar to reach. You got to get the evidence to do it first. And then they have to decide how are we going to impanel a jury? This is a long, complicated process. We're in completely uncharted waters, unmapped territory. Donald Trump pointed out this has never happened to a former president. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's true. But a former president has also never incited a mob that wound up ransacking the Capitol and almost prevented Congress from doing its job to certify a president election that a presidential election he lost. So that's different as well. He also didn't have the National Archives asking the FBI, hey, can you investigate this matter? Because this guy walked away with a bunch of boxes of documents that were supposed to be left here. Incidentally, those boxes of documents were at Mar-a-Lago. Do we know exactly what this federal investigation is about? No. And there's two potential federal ones that we know of off the bat, and we don't know everything that's going on in the Department of Justice anyway. Right. Now, I think that's a key thing, Mark, and I want to follow up on that, because we don't know exactly what's in the White House. It's like going to somebody's house and saying, wait a minute, that's my sweater in your closet, right? I mean, obviously, that would be something that the United States is concerned about. So it could be a January 6th investigation. It could be financial crimes. It could be archives one way or another. My question for you is, what impact do you think this will have on Trump's already stated and leaked plan to announce that he's running for president. Do you think this is going to speed this up? Do you think he's going to say, hey, I've never been arrested for nothing domestic. You guys can't come after me. I'm still going to run for president. Or do you think that his timeline is unaffected by the fact that the FBI just did an unannounced raid on his home? You're asking me to do a very difficult thing, which is get in the mind of Donald Trump, who <laughs> is very reactive. And right. he decides what he's going to do when he wants to do it. Now, he tries to falsify things. The reason you've heard lots of different reports out there, he's going to announce in September, he's going to announce in July, he's going to announce after the election, he's going to announce before the election, is he doesn't know, but he does know that he's going to announce. So I don't think it's going to change Donald Trump's plan to announce running for president. I think, and I'm not saying he's going to be charged, I'm not saying he's going to be jailed. Right. But if, yeah. even if you're in prison, he could run for president, he would be doing it. And he, he would probably win the primary at least right now, if you look at the, the yeah. polling. I mean, in reality, when he said, hey, I could shoot a guy on Fifth Avenue uh, and you know my supporters would still be with me, well, that's true. It's also true in the primaries as far as getting elected. Right. Uh, he is the undisputed heart of the party. He knows that. He's laid the groundwork to run for office. He's going to do it again, we believe. The question is, is when? Charlie, we're coming up on a tight break, but I've got to ask you this. Based on what Mark just has sort of laid out for us, do you think this makes Donald Trump stronger in his attempt to run for the nomination in 2024? Does he now say, look, they're coming after me. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm on the cross. I'm being prosecuted by these terrible people. Do you think this ultimately strengthens his position uh, within the Republican Party, or is it pretty much going to be the same? Uh, sh short term, it probably will. There will be a rallying around. But uh, ultimately is a whole different question. What made Merrick Garland decide to pull the trigger? What made that federal judge uh, go ahead? I mean, the ground is shifting um, under us right now, and we just don't know. But, you know, as Vaughn Hilliard said, Donald Trump has been, you know, saying, I am a political martyr. The deep state is out to get me. He is comfortable running as a martyr. But I'm also guessing that he probably that he, that he was uh, taken very much by surprise by the aggressiveness of the Department of Justice, the aggressiveness of the FBI, and he's got to be wondering what we are wondering. What are they looking for? What do they know? What are they going to do? And that's a big question mark for a guy like Donald Trump. Thank you, Charlie Sykes and Mark Caputo. I am back with Barbara McQuaid and Frank Faluguzzi. Also joining us is investigative reporter Dave Rode. He's executive editor for the News at the New Yorker. Dave, I'll start with you. With this news breaking now, I'm going to ask you just sort of a, a very simple financial question. Do you think that this raid, and, and, you know, for perhaps sources up in New York, do you think this raid might have anything to do with financial crimes? Uh, that the president has committed that began with investigations uh, with the Southern office in New York? Or do you think this may have something to do with the insurrection? What is, what's your sort of feeling and what are your sources telling you about the, the potential, potential focus of this raid? So uh, in, in the last few weeks, a government official told me that this issue of Trump mishandling classified documents was a major uh, focus of concern. That there, you know, there were news reports about this, I think, several months ago, but there were boxes of documents in the White House that were brought down to Mar-a-Lago. And so um, this official said that was very unusual, um, that there were major concerns about what was in those boxes and that 
you know, that seemed to be a focus of inquiry. So off the top of my head, um, that could be a primary focus. Uh, you know, there were news reports or pictures of those boxes and that Trump had just apparently taken things out of the White House, um, ignoring, you know, very clear laws about the mishandling of classified information. And the irony of all this, you know, Hillary Clinton was pilloried by Trump for her email use and for mishandling classified information. And you could have Donald Trump, you know, facing the same exact sort of inquiry uh, by potentially taking classified information to Mar-a-Lago without permission. Uh, yes, the, the but her emails uh, explanation for why Trump managed to get in office in 2016. Uh, Barbara, I'm going to ask you this. Um, as we sort of learned over the last hour, it could be multiple things that the FBI is looking for uh, within Mar-a-Lago. They could have multiple investigations. Is it possible that the FBI could be acting on behalf of multiple investigations, or are they only deployed for the specific case that the DOJ is looking after? So, you know, could they be on multiple missions? Could they be on archives? Could be, they be on January 6th and finances? Or can they only be deployed for one potential crime or one potential investigation? No, it is possible that you could get a warrant that could be looking for evidence of multiple crimes. That happens frequently. Say, for example, agents get a warrant to look for drugs and money laundering that is part of a money laundering operation. Uh, and child pornography is a part of a pornography ring. And it's all part, it's all on the same premises. You can get a warrant seeking evidence of each of those crimes if there's probable cause for it. So it need not be one or the other. But whatever it is, it must be specifically articulated that there is probable cause in that warrant to believe that evidence will be found. One other thing that's important is, even if this is only limited to one crime, like these classified documents that were reportedly mishandled and taken out of the White House, once agents are lawfully in a place, they may seize anything in plain view that constitutes contraband or evidence of a crime. So as they're gathering up these documents, it could very well be that they also find evidence of other crimes like election fraud. As long as they are there lawfully, they can seize any evidence in plain view. The New York Times is reporting that the search, according to two people familiar with the investigation, was prepared according to people familiar with the investigation, appeared to be focused on material that Mr. Trump had brought with him to Mar-a-Lago, his private club and residence, after he left the White House. Those boxes contained many pages of classified documents, according to a person familiar with their contents. Mr. Trump delayed returning 15 boxes of material requested by officials with the National Archives for many months, owing doing so when there became a threat of action being taken to retrieve them. So, Frank, when I ask you this really quick, what we're looking at is a situation where basically he's got a whole bunch of library books or VHS tapes that he hasn't returned. Uh, do you think this is a situation where Trump is going to, you know, potentially send somebody down to the house and say, hey, they're here, don't look at the other things? What are the potential actions of somebody under this investigation right now? What are their opportunities to defend themselves, or are they basically locked out of their own home until the FBI is done looking? So he has already issued a statement. I've just read through it quickly. As you alluded to earlier, Jason, he's, of course, made a reference to Hillary Clinton and her uh, legal issues. Um, but to answer your question, agents will need to secure the search site. So you, you don't allow somebody to wander around. And I understand he's out of town and, and maybe he's headed there or maybe he'll have his uh, his aides uh, try to do something. But rest assured, they will keep the site secure and free from anyone tampering with what they're doing, obstructing with what they're, they're doing. No one will be allowed to destroy any evidence. So that, that won't happen, and people risk being charged um, if they attempt to interfere with what's going on. Now, um, I will share with you that having put together information, talked to some folks, Jason, I'm going to use a phrase that, that's common in, among, amongst intelligence analysts, which is I'm going to say that I have a medium to high degree of certainty that this, at least in part, is focused on the National Archives case and, and that they are trying to make sure that there are no further secret or top secret uh, uh, documents from the White House days and that the, the time for talking is over. Um, you know, the time to negotiate and turn everything over is now is long gone. And now we've reached the point where agents are convincing a judge that they, they have evidence of a crime. Now, it, it, I'm curious about this, Barbara, because if it is something as, I, I wouldn't say this is simple, because clearly the National Archives have asked for it, but Barbara, if it's simply a matter of retrieving these documents and coming back, does that mean 
that those charges could simply be forthcoming much faster because if this was part of the January 6th investigation, we know there's information that would be part of the ongoing investigation. If this was financial crimes, it was probably just data. But if the concern was, hey, we think you have these library books, we think you have these archives, and we found them in your house after you refused to give them back to us for the last several months, isn't that sort of an open shut case with him getting convicted or at least having charges and being indicted? Well, I, it's absolutely a much smaller universe of evidence than would be a case involving election fraud for the January 6th insurrection. It's a, a, a much tighter case based solely on these documents. But as we said before, it's rare that the Justice Department, in fact, it's uh, unheard of, that the Justice Department charges somebody unless there is some intent to either harm the United States or help a foreign adversary. And so the mere possession of these documents would surprise me that would result in charges. I think you'd have to look for some level of willfulness here, that he took them and he kept them and he did so for some improper purpose. Now, it could be, as Frank said, that they've the time for talking is over, that they've tried to negotiate with him to get these back and they've gotten silence uh, the back of the hand. And that could have prompted this raid. That alone could constitute willfulness if you have these things and refuse to turn them back uh, to where they belong. Because every day that they're out, they do create a national security risk that they could fall into the wrong hands. So I'm going to follow up on this real quick, because this is kind of a key thing. Are you suggesting that there's a possibility that this wouldn't necessarily end up resulting in charges? I mean, it, 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 is, is that possible? Is it possible that if these documents are found, these archival documents are found in the White House, after Donald Trump took them out, he wasn't supposed to have them, took them down to mar logo you're telling me there's a chance that he won't necessarily get indicted for this, that he could get a slap on the wrist or a fine? Is that what you're suggesting is a possibility? Y yes. Yes, that is a possibility. Prosecutors exercise discretion all the time. They don't always bring charges just because they can. I think it'll matter quite a bit what's in these documents, just how sensitive are they. Uh, what was President Trump's knowledge that he, if he had them, uh, that he had them, uh, and what was in them, and why did he have them? Did he have them for some improper purpose? So all of those things will matter. The mere fact that he has them alone is probably not going to be enough for criminal charges, but all those other questions will need to be answered. And if they are answered in a way that is uh, troubling to national security concerns, then certainly criminal charges have to be on the table. I'm joined now by NBC News Justice and Intelligence Correspondent Ken Delaney. And Ken, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, as Barbara just said, there's we, we Frank pointed out, Barbara added, we now know that this is sort of an archival search. This is this is national treasure. We're trying to get this sort of information back from Mar Lago. She also said there's a possibility that simply being in possession of these documents may not be enough to lead to an indictment. What's your assessment and what are your sources telling you right now? Uh, are, are the possible consequences if these archives are found, if these documents are found in Mar-a-Lago? Well, Jason, the first thing they're telling us is we should be careful about what we think we know and we think we don't know. We should be very humble about this. This is a major, major development. The FBI has convinced a judge that probable cause uh, existed to believe that there was evidence of a crime at this location. Um, and w essentially what I can tell you is that the FBI is not disputing that they were there. Uh, and that um, th there were a lot of there was there was no indication as we were planning our weeks around Washington here in law enforcement world that anything like this was about to happen. So there may have been some people who were surprised by this in Washington and elsewhere. Um, and and I, I've been listening to our guests talk about the, the fact that this may likely uh, relate to the National Archives case. Um, that that may well be true. I have no reason to dispute that. Um, we should all just consider though what a dramatic step this is that the FBI has taken here um, if it's a case about some records that were taken from the White House. Um, so while we know everything else that is going on with a grand jury calling witnesses about election interference, um, people close to Donald Trump. So I think we should just be very humble and, and understand that we don't really know what this is about other than that it's an incredibly uh, dramatic and provocative step that the FBI have taken tonight. So, Ken, you used a very important tense there. You said they were there. Are you saying that the FBI has obtained what they wanted and they already left? Do you know if they are still on the ground in Mar-a-Lago, still sort of searching for materials, or has this sort of raid come and gone? I don't have that information, Jason. All I'm being told is that the FBI is not disputing uh, Trump's assertion in his statement that uh, they were conducting this raid.